Hi guys, got a an awesome new tool for you guys today. Um, it's called the Autofocuser, and basically what it does is it makes things look good really, really fast, um, just by using depth of field. I remember when I was a, a student sort of thing, and um, you know, like you're learning Maya, and you're looking for that one button to make things look cool. And this is pretty much that button that makes things look cool, makes them look good fast. Okay, so without further ado, I'll uh, quickly show you how to use it. Okay, so let's just uh, create a ground plane. And I'm just going to create a few objects to uh, illustrate uh, depth of field. So I'll just go with these a quick bevel. Just because bevels you know, don't naturally look good. Catch the light just a bit better. Okay, and I'll just bring up my dad's art script, which I'll be releasing uh, very soon. And this has the autofocuser and has some fast texturing tools, and uh, it, it's really, really good. So I recommend uh, keeping an eye out for it. So for now, I'm just going to duplicate the cylinder uh, a few times, and I'll just. Uh, Spread mounts on the z-axis, and I'll just quickly throw these uh, step these to the ground plane. And I might just add a bit of rotation, just because just to make it look a bit more interesting. So I'll click rotate, and it was uh, try sixty. And let's just randomize these a few times to get something that looks pretty good. A few more times. Okay, that looks pretty cool. And so I'll just uh, snap these objects to the ground once more. And uh, I suppose the only other thing we need is a light or lights. So let's add a key, a key light and a fill light. And I think we're pretty good to go. So I'll just quickly frame up. Render this out to show you what we're starting with. Okay, here we have our render, and this bit's yeah, a little bit interesting with the rotation and stuff. Um, I'll just quickly change it over to uh, linear, and close that now. And okay, it's, uh, I'll show you how this uh, depth of field uh, autofocus that works. So basically all you need is a camera, like so, a camera viewport. So I'll just be using my perspective camera in this case, and just a object that you want to focus on. So I'll choose this object since it's uh, sticking out nicely. And all you have to do is click the ZDF autofix button. And it'll prompt you if you want to um, output like double res, which you may want to do. It's, there's a certain sort of workflow if you're outputting things for post. So in this case, I'm just going to go yes, and I'll explain that at a later stage. OK, so what you'll notice straight away is that you have uh, an extra layer that gets created, this extra render layer. And that's basically a layer that's created just to output to post. So I'll once again I'll um, probably explain that in a second tutorial. Um, for now I'm just going to go over the, the um, it's using the bokeh lens shader effect. So I'll just turn that off, click on my master layer, and now all I need to do is turn on the bokeh effect. Now if I re-render this again. Okay, so as you can see, our selected object perfectly in focus, and all the foreground things and background things, maybe not so much, but the sun to blur out uh, as it gets further away from the uh, object in focus. Okay, I'll just uh, uh, intensify the blur just a bit to see you can see it a bit more clearly, just by lowering the f-stop, just like a normal camera. And if I re-render this again. Okay, and as you can see, the uh, objects is expected in front to obviously more blurred out sort of thing just by the, uh, the lower f stop. Okay, so uh, from here, like, like those of you that have used the bokeh effect before, I probably was thinking, okay, it's just the bokeh shader, and that's basically what it is at the moment. But the beauty of the autofocuser is that it's just by rotating around, no matter where I put my camera, what you notice is that our object stays perfectly in focus, and that's that, that's the true beauty of the autofocuser. 
But the other thing is that no matter where I put this object, and I'll just render again. So here we go. Um, so yeah, no matter where the, the object is put in the scene or inside the viewport, it'll always remain perfectly in focus, which obviously is you know, pretty cool. And the fact that you can set this up so fast, and I'll just once again show you just how fast you can set this up. So if I, if I go to the Z depth setup, I kind of remove Z depth. That's removed everything. So if I render that, it's as you can see, as you get me removed and uh, get it back, I have to do so. I'll place the script, start afresh, click ZZ, click yes in this case, turn off that layer, get in the master layer, click on the bokeh effect, put it to 2.8, and render that out. And, and we're back to where we were. So, as you can see, this is a seriously fast setup. It's pretty much the, as I said, the make a good button sort of sort of thing. So um, some of the other features that you do have, if you want to do some other cool stuff, is uh, you do have the ability to add extra objects um, into the Z depth setup. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to, to create like a perfect focus pull from say this object here to say this object here. Okay, so to do that, all you have to do is if I click on the select Z depth shader. Uh, what you'll see over here is you'll have, you have a blender, and this basically allows you to blend between uh, objects in a list, and just below it is the list of objects. So in this case, I've got P cylinder three, which obviously is this object here. And so if I go back to the Z depth shader, and I'll just click on the Z depth setup. Now, just by clicking on this object here, you can see you have this button over here, which is add object. So I'll click on that, and you can see this P cylinder one has been added to the list. So P cylinder one, and you can see it's now on the list. So uh, what you'll notice, and uh, like a good, a good way to illustrate what's actually going on is to actually click on the Z depth uh, render layer, and just by clicking six, you can see the uh, the shadow that's getting applied. So anything that's mid gray is perfectly in focus. Anything that's white or black is out of focus. So if I set the um, just the blur range over here to something a bit smaller, I'll illustrate it just a bit more. And okay, so that's just giving us a, a tighter um, depth of field. Okay, so now um, you'll notice just, just after your objects, there's a number being assigned to it. So one of them has zero, and the next one has one. So basically, uh, that's a number that relates to the blender. So if the blender's on zero, it's on the first object I selected. And as you can see, this object is now mid gray. And you can see, um, obviously, all the objects that are out there in black are going to be out of focus. Now, as I bring it to uh, one, so I go, uh, let's put one into there. You can see it's sort of moving forward. And now this object here is mid gray. Okay, so uh, what this allows us to do is it allows us to actually animate between. So if I set this back to zero, set a keyframe here. And I'm just going to get a frame 20 and put that to 1. So it means what it's doing is it's going to focus on this object here and then it's going to slide through and just create a focus pull from this object here to this object here. Okay, so I'm just going to key that. Get selected. And if we scrub through this, as you can see, it's changing focus from our first object to our second object. Okay, and so I'll go back to our master layer and I'll just do a quick render just to show you what's going on. So as you'd expect with this, like if I go to our render layer, you can see this object here is perfectly in focus. So I click render. Okay, so as you can see, our uh, first object, which is object zero, which is uh, piece of the three, is perfectly in focus. And if I go halfway through our animation, uh, what you'll notice is that the uh, it'll be creating a focus pull from here to there. So I'd imagine these objects in the middle should be perfectly in focus. Okay, as you can see, uh, those central objects are in focus. And if I go to frame 20, which is the object closest to us, 
can see uh, it's an Apple Ender uh, object uh, one is now fully in focus. So uh, if I click render now, that means this guy here should be uh, beautifully in focus. Okay, so as you can see, our foreground uh, element uh, remains beautifully in focus. And if I just go through this quickly, you can see there's our first object, our middle object, and our last object. So, um, yeah, the autofocus there. Totally recommend this. Um, and the next tutorials, I'll go just a bit more in depth to over the uh, post production sort of side of things. Uh, basically, what happens uh, if you do want to do post production is that you get this the depth render layer that gets output, and that has a render pass that's associated to it. So that's all linked up to the autofocuser. So uh, real easy to use, easy. It's an easy setup, and um, yeah, I'll uh, go over that in just uh, a bit more further detail in the next tutorial. Other than that. Uh, uh, have fun guys, awesome tool, totally recommend this, if you're going to buy a tool, buy this tool, okay, see you guys.